What's going on everyone? In today's video, we take a look at five EDC slings, cross body bags, fanny packs, slings, whatever you call them, we're looking at them. We've got a few favorites, a few classics, and perhaps a few unexpected slings. But before we get into that, I'm Theo with Rush Faster. We do guides and walkthroughs to bring you better gear and better ways to carry. So if that interests you, hit the subscribe button, smash the bell for notifications, and consider subscribing to our newsletter. By the way, before we get into the video, I wanna give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, G-Shock, but more on them in a bit. Let's roll. Kicking it off with a crowd favorite, the Bellroy Venture Sling is actually part of the Venture Collection. You can check out our full walkthrough here, as well as our special interview with JJ, the designer of the collection. It's my first feature film actually because it's over 60 minutes long. Go figure. The sling has a six liter capacity. It's made of 100% recycled PET bottles. This bag is actually water resistant as well. It comes standard with YKK Aqua Guard zippers. The polyester strap is managed with two pieces of aluminum hardware on either side of the bag. And this allows you to quickly release and take the bag off no matter which orientation you have the bag in. Two metal ladder loops allow for easier strap management as well. You can see here that the strap is actually stitched to both the front and back panels for Bellroy's self-compressing system. This means that the tension of the strap actually helps the sling maintain a slim profile. Minimal branding can be seen here at the front of this bag. The quick access pocket is well hidden behind this lip and has a small polyester pull tab on the zipper as well as an aqua guard zipper. Inside, we can see that there are two stretch mesh slip pockets as well as a paracord key leash with plastic clip. Gray stitching inside allows for easier visibility. Before getting into the pack out full disclosure, most of the items will be the same in each of these slings. So I'll just call them out this first time with this first sling. And then in the following slings, I'll just show you what's inside. So in this first stretch mesh pocket, we have this extra wallet. By the way, Exter is offering our viewers 40% off. So go ahead and check the link in the description below. Go ahead and use our code at checkout or use the link as well to receive that 40% off discount from Exter. Thank you, Exter. Also got some chapstick here. This is my Bellroy key case, some eye drops. So that is the front main compartment, quick access compartment. The main compartment access is managed through what Bellroy is calling their shingle back system. End-to-end -end zippers allow you full main compartment visibility with just a single zipper pull. Braided paracord pull tabs allow for less fumbling for those zippers as well. The opening of the main compartment actually remains unstitched to the main body. That also allows you further viewing down to the bottom of the bag. Inside, there is a fair amount of organization. Two mesh pockets on the left and right poles keep items off the bottom of the main compartment. On the front side here is an elevated zippered mesh pocket, perfect for a pair of sunglasses, but I have my Nomad pen in there. Also inside the main compartment, I have my Nomad Kevlar charging cable, some hand sanitizer, my nimble rechargeable battery, and my foldable Ray-Ban sunglasses. On this side of the pole, in this first stretch mesh pocket, I've got more spray hand sanitizer. I have my flossers here, and that's it for the main compartment. Looking at the bottom of the front mesh pocket, there is a small message here from Bellroy, which is nice. Moving to the back, there are three slip pockets, large, medium, and small. I had trouble figuring out what should go in this smallest slip pocket here, but maybe you had some better ideas than me. In that large slip pocket, I've got some travel size pills, got my AirPod Pros in my Nomad Horween leather case, got some breath mints, cause you never know. And I have my Leatherman Wave tool. Lastly, there is a hidden zippered compartment here with a little polyester pull tab. It spans about 80% of the back panel here and it's best for flat items. And there I just have my passport. Just like you, this sling has a padded bottom and back to keep your gear protected. Let's go ahead and do our Rush Faster beer capacity test. All right, I was able to fit a total of five 12 ounce beer cans in there. Perfect. Here's how the bag looks on body. For your reference, I'm five foot seven and one million pounds. I didn't really find the strap was snug enough to fit around my waist, but maybe yours might be more snug, maybe? Probably not. Out of San Francisco, we have the Black Ember Compact. 
We've done a full detailed compact walkthrough on our channel before, so link for that is going to be available up here. But here's a rundown of the compact. It's a five liter crossbody sling made of a 500 denier recycled nylon 6.6 fabric with good water resistance. Other features include YKK zippers with aqua guard, Hypalon pull tabs, anodized aluminum hardware, and a padded shoulder strap here. Branding is kept to a minimum on the pull tabs, on the aluminum hardware, as well as a tag inside the bag. There are two straps, like I said before, the padded shoulder strap, as well as a detachable grab handle here. The front access compartment, which is managed with magnets, is best suited for phones with its tall vertical capacity. I'm using my phone right now, but as you can see, it would best fit inside that main compartment. So nothing in there right now, but a Hypalon cutout here allows you to run a charging cable here, which is a nice thought, very clever. Getting into the main compartment, it opens up clamshell style to reveal the 300 denier matte gray ripstop nylon. Did someone say slip pockets? Because I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven total slip pockets in here. Lots of capacity and space for storage. In these first two front slip pockets, they run the full height of the bag. And there I have the charging cable, some eye drops. And then in here, there is the uh, detachable magnetic keychain from Black Amber. I don't have anything on there, but just got my keys on there, a little bit of pills, chapstick, and a multi-tool here. And then getting into the main compartment, I have some hand sanitizer, more hand sanitizer, sunglasses, and the wallet there. There's that inside tab from Black Ember. The walls are slightly padded to provide cushioning for your valuables. The top slip pocket here runs about halfway down the bag. It's got some headphones in there. In this next slip pocket, it runs the full length of the bag. So it's just got flossers and also some breath mints. In this slip pocket, which is great for a pen, just got a pen there. And there is one more zippered panel back here that runs the full height and width of the bag. And there I just got some, my passports are really good for secret documents in there. The final back pocket opens up and it is the tech pocket here to reveal two mesh pockets, one here and also another one here. This is where Black Ember tells us you can put your devices. They tell us you can fit up to an iPad mini in there. Just got a portable charger. Let's see how much beer fits in here. All right, I was able to put a total of four beers inside the Black Ember Compact and then sticking one into the tech sleeve compartment. Here's how the bag looks on body. Next up is also San Francisco based Air's Day Sling 3. Released with their travel collection, this sling is built for travel durability and plenty of organization. The full travel collection was actually reviewed by her very own Zach and that can be viewed using the link above. The bag itself has a three liter capacity and is made of 1680 denier ballistic nylon that is blue signed approved and there is some good water resistance with this bag. YKK zippers are all over this bag with one AquaGuard zipper on the quick access pocket. More on that in a bit. The strap sits at a 45 degree angle at the top of this bag, making it really best suited for shoulder and not waist carry. The strap itself is made of a high density polyester fabric, managed with some Duraflex hardware and a metal Fidlock buckle that sits closely to the bag. This is not adjustable. Branding can be found on the strap attachment here and on each of the zipper poles. On the other side, there is a small loop for attachments such as a carabiner or maybe a bike light. The quick access pocket is secured with an AquaGuard zipper and an oversized matte finished YKK zipper. There are counter poles at either side of the bag and a Hypalon zipper garage here. Inside, we can see there is some nice contrast stitching. Got my keys on the key leash with a gated hook there, headphones and wallet. So this does run about half of the capacity of the bag here. Getting into the main compartment, we've got a wide, wide opening here. I mean, the zipper runs practically pole to pole, as you can see this side of the bag 
and on this side of the bag. Lots of visibility into the main compartment. On the front, we have two mesh slip pockets, got a portable charger. Inside the main compartment, hand sanitizer, sunglasses for hand sanitizer. On the back here, we've got two mesh slip pockets and I've got my charging cable and multi-tool. Behind here, we have a zippered pocket with a lay flat zipper in there, pretty nice. Got a few items in there. Very nice. Behind there is a second slip pocket for larger items, maybe less secret items. I have my journal in there, debatable whether or not it's secret or not. Moving to the back, we see a nice polyester grab handle here. There is one more secret pocket behind this flap and it does run the full height and capacity of the back panel. With a pull of this Hypalon pull tab, we can see that I just have my passport. It hides body side of the bag, so beware of putting any lumpy objects in this pocket. Let's see how much beer we can fit in here. All right, with some struggle, I was able to fit a total of four 12 ounce beer cans. Here's how the bag looks on body. I wanted to take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, G-Shock. G-Shock, which is short for gravitational shock, was started 40 years ago by Kikuo Ibe, who after an accident with a family heirloom, set out to make a tougher, more durable watch. Made to be shock, vibration, and water resistant, G-Shocks are an industry standard for durability. The watch I'm wearing today is the G-Shock GA2100, or also known as the Cassie Oak. This has been an EDC staple for a reason. Part analog, part digital, this watch is sleek without being in your face. I have the black colorway here, but this comes in a wide range of colors for whatever fits your fancy. The watch I'm wearing has a resin strap and body, but G-Shock does have a full metal version, which looks absolutely stunning. Solar charging, LED light, stopwatch, timer, and alarm features. This wristwatch comes with standard features and then some. Bluetooth connectivity allows you to pair your watch for an easy setup, setting alarms, and syncing your watch to your time zone. G-Shock remains a pillar in EDC and continues to innovate year after year. G-Shock, thank you for sending over this watch and for sponsoring this video. Tom Bin. Our friends over at Tom Bin were kind enough to send over this Le Petit Derriere, which is French for the little booty. This is a 4.6 liter hip pack slash convertible shoulder pack. Unfortunately, Tom Bin has let us know that its big brother, Le Grand Derriere, or the big booty, will be retired soon. While half the size, the Petit still does some serious heavy lifting. Or should I call it thickness? The exterior fabric is a high quality 630 denier, 50% recycled ballistic nylon, and this is the wilderness colorway. This fabric actually feels great. There's definitely quality in the weave as well as the feel of it as well. There's Duraflex hardware for the buckles, strap ladders, as well as the attachment points for the shoulder strap, which comes as an add-on for the bag. Moving backwards, we can see that the strap is attached to these large oversized wings. I mean, these things are big. This thing could fly away if it wanted to. When not in use, you can tuck them away underneath the padded back panel. that's them tucked away and you can carry them on this polyester grab handle. Nice. The front of the bag has two pockets for storage. The first one opens with a number eight YKK zipper. It gives you storage the full height of this pocket. Inside there I've just got a charging cable as well as a battery pack. The inside has a patterned 210 denier Halcyon in the color Wasabi. It's the perfect amount of accent. There's no organization inside this pocket. Underneath these buckled pocket, there is a spot here for a detachable key leash. Got my keys on there. And this is managed with a ball and cage plastic clip, which offers mobility and ease of use. Inside, this is a pretty deep pocket, runs the full height of the bag as well. Best used for a phone, but in there I have my wallet, flossers, and multi-tool. Underneath this dust flap, we have the opening for the main compartment. I do have to mention something here about the number eight zippers, the feel and the sound of them just give me a nostalgia, like opening up an elementary school backpack. It's a really great feeling. By the way, Tom Bin does send and include extra zipper poles for you if you're interested in doing that. A nice nod to Tom Bin's customization of the bag. 
the main compartment opens up to an unorganized kind of main compartment here. While this might cause anxiety for some, I think it's pretty nice. If you're a pouch person, you could put some pouches in here. If you're into water bottles, you can put a water bottle in here. But I'm the latter. I kind of prefer a kind of large and unorganized space. This can easily fit this hand sanitizer, more hand sanitizer, pills, sunglasses, chapstick, AirPods, and some eye drops. And I will go ahead and put my 20 ounce simple modern water bottle pocket, and there's still plenty of room in there for more things. Inside, there are four O-rings that hang off like this portion of the bag, this portion of the bag, basically in all the four corners. So you can easily attach other Tombin add-on accessories or perhaps a carabiner. One more back slip pocket here is a nice spot for slimmer items such as a journal, or perhaps a wallet. I have my passport in there. Let's go ahead and put some beer in here. All right, I was able to fit a total of eight beers in here. I'm not going to close this pocket because it might bust, but that's pretty good. Tom Bin takes the cake when it comes to this beer capacity test so far for this video. Here's how the bag looks on body. This next bag is an ode to our cycling friends. We're looking at the Why Not Switch, which might actually just be your next favorite sling. Based out of Toronto, Why Not is a team of carry-minded individuals cranking out some solid gear for both bikers and everyday carry people. Founder Tony started creating gear specifically for cyclists and started gaining traction at cycling meetups. The rest is history. Switching gears, let's take a peek at this thing. We've got the black multicam version here, but this beauty comes in a range of colors. This is also a 4.5 liter sling, which actually I feel is probably the perfect size for biking and for everyday carry. The exterior is water repellent and comes standard with AquaGuard zippers. Each zipper has threaded elastic for easier pullability. Is that a word? Grippiness, I guess. On the outside, there are several segmented polyester straps that are Molly style webbing to allow for attachments. More on that in a little bit. On the back is a tuck away section for the two female ends of the strap, which are Duraflex buckles. You can detach it here and there are two male ends on the seatbelt style strap, complete with elastic thumb loops here for easier strap management. Looking to the front, this front quick access pocket has some orange contrast for a better visibility. There are two equal size stretch mesh pockets on here. Inside there, I don't have anything. But in the rest of the compartment, I've got flossers, got a multi-tool here, got my wallet. And also there is a strap here, seatbelt style with a gated G-hook, which is a nice key leash. There's a few items in here, which is, uh, I'll explain it a little bit, but there's a volet straps and there's an elastic weapon here. Here's a better look at those stretch mesh pockets. There's a little bit of dimension to that quick access compartment, so there's a lot of room for expansion, meaning you can pack out this little pocket pretty nicely. Here on the front is a polyester strap with two stitchings here on either end for attachments like a bike light or perhaps a carabiner. And then we can see on this end here, there's some simple why not branding on this tab. The main compartment has counter poles on each side here on the side of the bag. Just allows you to get into the main compartment a little bit easier. Inside, we see that high visibility orange and on the front here, two equal size stretch mesh pockets. So I have some sanitizer, sanitizer, pills, a little bit of chapstick, some eye drops, AirPods, and also all of those things. There is a flap style here, slip pocket. It's really best for some flat items. Got my journal in there. I find this amount of organization to actually be perfect because if you're biking, you don't wanna reach in here and be fumbling around too much with zippers and so on and so forth. If we move backwards here, there is a scrab handle here, a polyester strap with two more slotted sections on either side here for attaching gear. And then on this back portion, which we looked at earlier, there is a tuck away flap here for both of those female ends of the straps. 
There's a vertical strap here, again, with slotted segments, and this is all for attaching the bag to your bike. Why not does a great job of explaining this on their website, so I'm going to link it above, but I'm just gonna go ahead and try to give it a go here in explaining. So each bag comes with two nine inch volet straps, and those two volet straps go here and attach here on these handles and on this side to attach your handlebars like so. So you can imagine your handlebars are strapped across this way. And then the stem of the bag, which will run vertically, can be secured with this tiny piece of elastic. And so there are three points here that you can attach to adjust that elastic to really strap onto the stem. If that didn't make any sense, I will link Why Not's explanation of how to attach this to your bag. But this piece of elastic helps ensure that the bag won't flop around while you're riding so it'll go back and forth. And that's it. Let's go ahead and do our rush faster beer capacity test. All right, a little bit of clever stacking, but I was able to fit six. Let's see if we could fit seven. No, that's not happening. Okay, we were able to fit six total 12 ounce beer cans. Not bad. Here's how the bag looks on body. And then before we go, as a friendly thank you to our viewers, Why Not is offering 10% off with the code RUSHFASTER10 at checkout. So be sure to use that link that we have below and also the RUSHFASTER10 at checkout for 10% off. Thank you, Why Not. Alpaca have sent over a few of their Bravo slings in multiple sizes. So we'll start with the smallest, which is the Bravo Sling Mini here. It's a four liter sling with an exterior made of a 500 denier ballistic nylon. It's got good water resistance and aqua guard zippers, so your contents stay nice and dry. The strap is made of a seatbelt style material and is secured with a maglox clasp. The strap itself is managed with a loop of elastic here, so there are no messy ends kind of hanging and dangling off. There is space on either side of this bag to attach Alpaca's hub system. Alpaca does include a small plastic D-ring here at the base of the bag if you want to add on a stability strap. That's an available purchase as an add-on and it keeps the bag stable when you're on the move or perhaps biking. One thing to note is that this does have almost an upside down pyramid shape, meaning wider at the opening bag and narrow at the base, something to consider. There are no wings per se on this bag, but it does hold the strap in a way that keeps the bag and the strap kind of snug against your body. At the base of the bag here, there is some black on black alpaca branding, which is visible at the front of the bag. And on each of the zipper pulls, there is a small alpaca, pretty cute. The front main access pocket here does contain a key leash. And I don't have my keys attached on there, but I do have my keys. And inside we see that there is that high visibility 210 denier ripstop nylon. The front access pocket here does fill the whole dimensions of this front panel. And other items I have in there are my chapstick, and that's it. Moving backwards, the main compartment zippers actually have a small spot if you wanna include a travel lock, which is a really thoughtful feature. One thing I will say getting into the main compartment is that sometimes it does feel like this flap kind of gets in the way in looking down into the main compartment. Sometimes it feels like you have to hold it back or perhaps even like tuck it into the bag so that you can actually look down in the bag. Just something to consider. On the front of the bag here, we have two slip pockets and I'm just gonna remove the main contents of the bag. Some hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer, eye drops, charging cable, and that's it on that side of the bag. And then in these two slip pockets here, they're both equal in size. Uh, yeah. Battery pack and also some medicine, some flossers, and last but not least, the AirPods. You see what I mean kind of about this flap? It's hard to kind of look in there. That's it actually for the main compartment. In the main compartment, there's uh, no other kind of organization here. Again, hard to see. Next here, there is a fleece line slip pocket. An alpaca does tell us this is large enough to fit a Nintendo Switch or an iPad mini. And this sling is moderately padded to keep your tech devices protected. 
Lastly, there is a discrete pocket here on the back side, which is great for travel documents or even your wallet. Let's go ahead and do a rush faster beer capacity test on this thing. All right, I was able to pretty comfortably fit three 12 ounce beers in there. Don't wanna pack this out too much bigger. Here's how the sling looks on body. So this is the Bravo X V2, and it acts like a big brother to the Mini. Lots of similar hardware, including AquaGuard zippers, Maglox buckle, D-ring here at the bottom, but a few changes to manage the larger six liter capacity. The external material now is a 1000 denier ballistic nylon with water resistance. The first visual change is actually the padded foam backing here. It's got that alpaca branding. It feels like a dense EVA foam, which does provide some nice cushion against the body. Stitched into the back panel is a luggage pass-through, which is a nice option for travelers. And it's that same seat belt style material. And you can see it's pretty well stitched into this back panel. The main strap here is now sitting on some wings, which is nice because it can allow you to uh, keep it nicely contoured against your body. The buckle is fixed to the left side of the bag, and that is that Maglox buckle. The front of the bag features a smaller stitch tab here with alpaca branding, which is on the reinforced base of the bag, which is really nice. There are no alpacas on the zipper pulls this time around. Alpaca does include here a SIM card carrier that doubles as a charging port, so you can pass a cable out through here and charge your phone. I'll be honest to say that this isn't necessarily my favorite feature, probably because I don't walk around with my phone in my hand and need to charge it that way. If you use this feature and you really enjoy this feature, let me know down in the comments below so you can tell me what you think. The quick access pocket here has a small key leash on a seatbelt style strap material and it unclips like so. Don't have my keys on there, but my keys are in here as well as my wallet, my AirPods, and that is it in this pocket. Still got that high visibility 210 denier ripstop nylon inside and the dimensions of this pocket fill all the way down to the base of the bag. So this is a pretty large pocket. Moving backwards to the main compartment, we do have the ability to put that travel lock on there on these uh, two main compartment zippers. So the main compartment does look very similar to the mini. Two slip pockets, large up in here and then an open main section. So inside the slip pockets, got a charging cable, another charging cable, battery, hand sanitizer, eye drops, hand sanitizer. That's it for the slip pockets. And then in the main compartment here, I've got some sunglasses. And there is a kind of big difference here. There is that the fleece line slip pocket, but there is a strap here to manage and keep all your tech stuff down. So in there, we can put a Nintendo Switch, which is really nice. And we can fit up to a 11 inch iPad Pro in there. That's really nice. I don't have one, but Switch is a nice comparison. Last but not least, there is a concealed pocket in here. And there is a difference in this concealed pocket. You can see that there are two slip pockets inside and also an attachment for an alpaca hub. So in the slip pocket, I've got my passport, flossers, chapstick, pills, breath mints. And then on each of those slip pockets is two Hypalon accents, which is really nice if you wanna pull on that. And I've just got a journal in there. So that's the whole bag. Pretty spacious, pretty nice. Let's go ahead and do a beer capacity test. Okay, so I was able to fit total of six beers in here and then two down lying kind of horizontally there. So a total of eight beers in here, not bad. Here's how the bag looks on body. It's the final chapter in the Bravo series with the Bravo Sling Max. At 10 liters, I feel like this bag just finally works. And by the way, if it looks like this bag is about to burst, it 
probably is about to burst, but for good reason. I'll show you that in a little bit. I packed this out pretty well. And while it's creeping into mm, messenger bag territory, it does still function and wear like a crossbody sling. I've got the X-Pack version. And, come on, who doesn't love X-Pack? The front of this bag does have a similar profile to the Bravo X, but the back features something completely different. It's a detachable shoulder strap and it's a detachable maglock shoulder strap. So you just press down on that button and you can actually take off this whole thing and carry it in briefcase mode. The strap is padded with a kind of topographical looking dense EVA foam. And it's maybe just for aesthetics, but I do find that actually this padding is pretty comfortable to wear across the body. On the front part of this strap is a seatbelt style material and it is in that Molly webbing style. And it is perfect for an alpaca kind of hub attachment here at different points of the strap. At the base of the strap is a maglox buckle here and the extra strap is managed with a piece of elastic here so there are no loose ends. Here on the back panel is a grab handle. It's not padded so I can imagine it's slightly uncomfortable for maybe larger pack outs and I do have this packed out pretty large right now so it is slightly maybe uncomfortable but you know it still works as a grab handle. The back as well as the base of this bag are padded. The front of the bag here features that same SIM card holder as we saw on the Bravo X V2 with the charging port. The quick access pocket here now does have a lockable travel lock feature option, so kind of nice there. And this main access pocket opens up kind of in a U-shaped pattern to kind of reveal the whole inside here. And you can see this is pretty different than the other bags. There's two slip pockets here on the front. I've got my keys in there as well as my AirPods. And then in the middle, we have an attachment for the hub system. I just got the uh, ID badge holder there. There's one mesh pocket here, hand sanitizer, and then two more slip pockets on both sides of the hub system. Got my wallet and chapstick and more sanitizer. So the front compartment does have kind of a larger dimension than it appears. It does run all the way to the base of the bag. Pretty nice, pretty spacious front compartment there. The main compartment is accessed through here, still able to lock the uh, travel lock there on the zippers. And the main compartment here has a pretty similar layout as before. We see two slip pockets, flossers, mints, eye drops, medication. You guys are getting the picture and some sunglasses. So those are those two slip pockets. And you can see here, there's a larger kind of fleece line tech pocket here. So this is a 13 inch MacBook Pro. Aha, pretty big. And that's a pretty spacious compartment. Alpaca does tell us you can fit up to a 14 inch laptop in here. So you can pack this out pretty well. Directly behind that, we see there's another tech pocket, aha. So I have my Nintendo Switch in there. And there are a few slip pockets along the back here. So one, two, three, four in total. Three kind of smaller ones, so good for pens. And I do have, I have my Nomad pen. Ooh, that's a deep pocket. Got my charging cable and rechargeable battery. So it's a really nice secondary tech pocket there. Last but not least, there is one more hidden discrete pocket back here. And this is pretty hard to access. Um, it does sit behind these kind of two lips. So you do have to kind of pull it open there. It's got that high visibility orange, best for flat pockets. So I got my journal as well as my passport in there. Let's go ahead and do a beer capacity test on this thing. Okay, it looks like I ran out of beer, but there are 10, 12 ounce cans in here. I bet you could fit maybe at least two or three more. So that would make for a total of 13. Let's just say 12, just to be safe. Total of 12, 12 ounce cans in here. That's pretty good. Not too bad. Here's how the bag looks on body. This has been a look at five everyday slings and whether they're top everyday slings, well, that's up to you. 
Each bag is as unique as its own user, and we hope this video helped you out in choosing a sling that's right for you. We've actually done a top five EDC slings pick on this channel before. Link for that is going to be in the description below. With the recent changes in travel, it feels like slings have just become even more important for everyday carry. Thanks again to the sponsor of this video, G-Shock. The link for this watch, as well as any of the products you've seen in this video, will be in the description below. And those affiliate links do go a long way at helping us out here at Rush Faster. So please use the links as well as the promo codes to help support us here. Subscribe for more carry content. Give us a thumbs up if you think we deserve it. And let me know in the comments below if you think I forgot your favorite sling. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Theo with Rush Faster. Take care and we'll see you next time.